Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bluecube channel. In continuation of our Adobe Animate tutorials, in this video you will first learn how frame-by-frame -frame animation works, and then we'll use this method to create the movement and rotation of wind and leaves in the scene. To leave a clear definition of frame-by-frame -frame in your mind, I should tell you that frame-by-frame -frame is the oldest and most fundamental animation technique. In this method, each frame of the animation is drawn manually. In fact, for every frame we create and design a keyframe, and when these keyframes play one after another at a specific speed, an animation is created. Now, for example, I move to frame 30. The scene is empty. I click here and create several frames like this. As you can see, all these frames that were created are empty. To turn them into frame-by-frame -frame animation, I right-click here and select the option Convert to Frame-by-Frame -frame Animation. When you open this option, it has several settings. Here it tells you, for how many frames should one keyframe be created? For example, if you choose the first option, it creates one keyframe for each frame. The second option creates one keyframe for every two frames. The third option creates one keyframe for every three frames. And the fourth option creates one keyframe for every four frames. If we choose the custom option, we can specify the number ourselves. For example, we can type the number 8 or the number 6, and then we can decide after how many frames a keyframe should be created. If I cancel this and right click again, for example, I choose the option keyframe each frame. In this case, if you look carefully, here a keyframe has been created for each frame. You can see that each one has a dot, and all the frames are separated and turned into keyframes. But right now they are empty, because we haven't yet created any shape or drawing. Now, if I create another layer here, since the lower layer already has 30 frames or keyframes, the upper layer also automatically gets frames. If I right click here and, for example, choose the option to create one keyframe for every three frames, and then click on it, you can see how different it looks. Here there is one keyframe, and the animation stays fixed for two frames before moving on again. Let me explain. Here in the upper layer, if I select it and create a shape, for example a simple line like this, you will notice that as soon as I draw a line, a keyframe is created here for me. And because it contains a drawing, it appears solid, dark. After that, there are two empty frames, and in the third frame it moves to the next keyframe. This means that at frame 4, it tells the program to create the next keyframe for us, and the previous drawing is removed. Now if I, for example, come and draw another shape here, this process happens again. But in the lower layer, where we set it to create a keyframe for every single frame, it is clear that if I click here, it creates a keyframe for that frame, then another keyframe for the next frame, and so on. This happens for every single frame in that layer. So this is how it works, as I explained to you. Now, moving forward, when we create the effect of wind in the scene, you will get a much better sense of how frame by frame works. I will create a new layer here. Then I select the two lower layers and remove them. I also select this layer and delete it. In the new layer I just created, again 30 frames are generated for me. I right-click and select the option frame by frame animation. I choose the first option so that one keyframe is created for every single frame. You might say that the wind cannot be seen, but in animation, many times we want to represent the wind in a scene to show that it is passing through, and later we can also add the sound of the wind into the animation. Now, in frame 1 where I am right now, I take the brush tool and from here, from outside the stage, I draw a straight line like this. In frame 2, you can see that the previous line has disappeared, and we can no longer see it. But in fact, that line still exists in the previous frame, and now in the new frame it is asking us to draw the next line to continue the animation. To make it possible for me to still see the previous line while drawing the new one, I enable the onion skin option. In this mode, if you pay attention, you will see a yellow overlay. With this, I can choose how many of the previous frames I want it to show me and I can also choose how many of the next frames to show. For this tutorial, I only want it to show me one previous frame, which is now highlighted in yellow. So, when I am on frame 1, 
the drawing appears solid black. When I move to frame 2, it turns yellow, showing me that this was the drawing from the previous frame. This way it reminds me of what I created earlier. Now, in frame 2, I can easily use the brush tool again, hold down the shift key, and draw the next line. Look here, frame 1, frame 2. Then I move on to frame 3. On frame 3, the yellow outline appears again, showing me what was drawn in frame 2. Now I can come here, hold down shift, and draw the third line like this. So, in this way, we can use onion skin to always see the previous frame and then add the new drawing. Here, I want to create a twist effect for the wind. Well, with the brush tool, it might not look very good. For example, if I go to frame 4 and try to do this by hand with the brush, the result may not be that smooth. So, in frame 4, I switch to the pen tool. Notice that when I was using the brush tool, its size was set to 10. Now that I'm using the pen tool, I will also set the thickness to 10. Then I come here and make a click. And I add another click here like this. Good, my line has been created. Now I move to frame 5. Again, I click here. Now in frame 5, I can still see frame 4 thanks to onion skin. I make a click here, and then I release the left mouse button like this. Now I want to see more of the previous frames. So I extend the range of onion skin in this way. This allows me to view several of the previous frames together. That looks good enough for now. Then, in the next frame, I want to create another keyframe like this. Well, now I don't need to see that many frames, so I reduce the onion skin range again to show just one or two frames before. I move on to the following frame, and continue in the same way. Here I can switch back to the brush tool and keep working. I click with the left mouse button, hold down shift, and create another straight line. Then I go to the next frame and do the same thing again. Step by step, I continue this process across different frames, and finally the line exits the stage. Now you can see that in each frame we came and created this animation. If I turn onion skin off, it no longer shows the previous frames. Look, this is what happens. Let me go ahead and select these extra frames and remove them like this. Now, if we play it, you will see that this animation has been created for us in this way. Now I click here, and the whole layer is selected, all of its key frames. I right-click and choose Convert Layer to Symbol. I convert it into a graphic symbol and click OK. So, as you can see, the animation has now been turned into a symbol. Next, I right-click again and choose Duplicate Layers, which creates another copy for me. Then I right-click once more and choose Duplicate Layers again. Now we have three layers created for this line. I move to frame 1, select the top layer, and using the free transform tool, let me zoom in a little, I lower it slightly. Look, I am in frame 1, I have the top layer selected, and I move it downward like this. Then I can also select the middle or bottom layer and move it slightly upward. Now I return fully to the main stage. As you can see, what happens now is that all the shapes move together at the same time. If I enable loop playback and play the animation, you'll see that the animation plays like this. But I don't want the movement to be completely synchronized. So I go to the top layer, select all the frames here, and shift them a little forward. Then I also select the bottom layer and move it a bit forward as well. That's good enough. Now, as you can see, the animation is created in this way. If I turn off the loop and play it again, you'll see that we now have a more natural wind effect. Now, if we want, we can also add some leaves into the scene. I create a new layer here, and from the section where I have my images, I import a leaf into the project like this. I scale it down a little, this size looks about right, and then I convert it into a symbol. Now I right-click on this layer and choose Create Motion Tween. 
I moved to the last frame and dragged the leaf forward like this. As you can see, the leaf also moves along with the wind. But I want to adjust its path a little. So, using the selection tool, I can change the motion path slightly. Let me add a keyframe here, like this, so I can make the changes more clearly. I pull it up a little here, and down a little there. With the selection tool, I can bend the path this way. Now, from the same leaf layer that I just created, I can make several duplicates. I right click and create two or three duplicates of this layer like this. Then, in frame 1, I reposition them. But pay attention, you must move them together with their motion paths. So, select the entire path and the leaf, and then move them like this. I do the same with the other layer, adjusting it as well. I also select these duplicates and shift them slightly forward or backward in time, so that they don't all move too perfectly in sync, but instead look random and natural. Now, at the last frame of each of them, I can also add a little rotation, to make the leaves look more realistic as they fall and blow in the wind. Now, if I play the animation, or press Ctrl plus Enter, you will see that this kind of effect is created. In the scene, you can use this technique to represent the wind visually. So, that's it for the frame-by-frame -frame technique, as well as creating a wind effect in the scene. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial too. Thank you very much for staying with me until the end of the video, and until the next one, goodbye for now.